Let's take a look at the flexibility of editing on our main project window in Cubase. We can have many different types of tracks in Cubase, whether it's a marker track, a tempo track, video, arrangers, uh, audio, MIDI instruments, folders, and they could all peacefully coexist on one project window. We can have multiple audio file formats and multiple audio file bit depths within the same project. So I could have a 16-bit drum loop, a 24-bit guitar, or a 32-bit vocal. We can customize the toolbars in the top by simply right mouse clicking and choosing what elements we want to see there and very similar to our transport. There are many different types of preferences we can have so you can have the application work exactly how you want. Different users, if they're running on the same system, could each have their preference presets or you could have different presets for editing MIDI versus tracking audio versus mixing. Key commands can also be customized in the application. For any function in the application, you can change and modify your own key commands. Macros will allow you to have a series of key commands that can be executed in a series in one fell swoop. So if you find yourself doing similar types of edits over and over and over again using the same commands, simply assign it into a macro and all the steps will be run as one function. There are also several different presets for working with different programs key commands. So if you're familiar with Logic, Pro Tools, or Sonar key commands, just simply load up their preferences and their key commands will be loaded and you can work as you would in the other programs but inside of Cubase. Now many of the functions in Cubase are accessed by right mouse clicking. By default you'll have a small toolbox but you could also, there's a preference to change it to an extended toolbox or you could actually toggle the behavior by hitting the control key while right mouse clicking. Here I see my main toolbox. So if I wanted to see my tools plus context sensitive menu functions can all be accessed right here. So if I want to grab my split tool, I can cut parts. If I wanted to erase parts, I could click on it with my eraser tool. If I wanted to move parts, I could grab my selection tool. If I wanted to mute parts, I could come over here, click on it with my X tool, the parts will turn gray. If I wanted to split again, and join the parts together, I can grab my glue gun. If I wanted to zoom, I could also just simply grab my toolbox right there, grab my zoom tool and zoom in on one particular section. If I double click in a blank area, I can actually have unlimited levels of zoom. So I can undo my zoom levels. One other handy zoom feature is taking the cursor in the top of the timeline holding the mouse down and zooming in or you could zoom right down to the sample level. This makes navigation a breeze. Anytime a part is selected we can actually see five anchor points. So if I wanted to do a fade in I could just grab my upper left hand corner handle or a fade out grab my upper right hand corner handle. So my bottom handles will allow me to do sizing. So if I wanted to have this clip end right there or right here or this clip to begin here or there. Now we can also have sizing moves contents so I could switch to a secondary mode. This way if I wanted the beginning of that clip to fall at a specific point in time and let the ending fall where it will or the opposite let the ending fall at a point in time and have the beginning fall where it will I could just have it sizing moves contents. I could also come right over here and say sizing moves time stretch. So if I wanted to actually say I want this clip to be that long, it would automatically time compress it to fit into that amount of space. My upper center handle will allow me to actually adjust the volume of a clip. So if I wanted this clip to be louder or softer, I could just simply adjust the volume right there. Grabbing my drawing tool, I could also draw volume changes directly on a part as well. Going to my lower left hand corner, I could adjust the volume right here underneath and this is tied into my mixer automation. So if I wanted to adjust volume levels beforehand, I could use my kind of clip based volume or my event based volume with dynamic changes or just simply tie into my automation. 
Now I can also work with folder tracks. So if I have a number of different tracks, let's say background vocals, and I wanted to organize these, I can just simply copy different tracks into a folder. So you see that as I grab that track there. So now I could collapse the folder view right here and I could have all of my parts. So if I want to have all of my drums or all my guitars or all my keyboards in one folder, it's very easy to do. Now my folder track will also react to my tools. So if I wanted to cut in my folder, I could just simply cut and erase and we'll see all the parts within the folder automatically reflect the changes. So this is a very easy way of working with large numbers of tracks. So folder tracks are very convenient for that. Now if I've done all sorts of edits and I could also do these types of edits across multiple tracks. So if I wanted to do a fade in on all those events, I could just simply adjust that. If I wanted to come over here and make a copy, I could hold down my alt key. Now let's say I wanted to have an event and I had a different event start and end position that I adjusted here and I wanted to actually slip the audio within the event. So let's say I have this event here and I've chosen a new event start and a new event ending. I could actually just hold down my alt and control or command option and slip the audio within the event itself. To edit the fade ins, I could just double click in my fade in region customize my fade ins or conversely my fade outs I could adjust the same way. If I have a clip that is overlapping I want to crossfade I just simply hit the X key and now I could actually have my crossfade editor and I could have independent fade ins from fade outs. I could audition just the fade out, the fade in or the crossfade in its entirety and if I wanted to just simply make the crossfade smaller or larger or reposition the crossfade we could do it right there. Now we can also have alternate powers for tools. So if I wanted to grab my object selection tool and go to the right hand side, the lower right hand corner, I could now just hold down my alt or option key and drag and make copies. If I wanted to take a long audio file and if I wanted to glue multiple parts together, I could just hold down my alt or option key and glue my events. If I wanted to split at even intervals, just come right over here, grab my scissors tool, alter option and split, and I'll get my alternate functionality there. Now, let's say I've done all sorts of wonderful edits in my project, but I've yet to actually listen to my music. And let's say as I'm playing, let's move some additional parts around, that we listen to our files. And let's say we've now destroyed our song. One of the great things we have in Cubase is unlimited levels of undo. So I can go to my edit history. And here I can see every single edit that I performed this entire demonstration. So if I wanted to simply kind of scroll through time, I could just simply take all my edits. So I could take my 59 edits and while the audio is playing, just scroll right back through time. And it's got to magic. And it's got to right back to where we started. So as you can see, you can do a tremendous amount of musical editing for your projects in Cubase on the main project window.